From here inside Drayton Manor and that behind me there, formerly Shockwave, now known as The Wave, will be opening in around half an hour's time to the general public. Quite excited to ride it. Lap bars will make it such a better experience. Since I was last here, they've also opened Frontier Falls, which is their new Western themed area. There's still progress being made on their brand new roller coaster for this season. So I'll go and check that out, as well as get on a whole bunch of other rides as well. So exciting times here today at Drayton Manor. So this is Frontier Falls. This has been uh, all rethemed for this year. Including an accelerator. It's got a slightly browner facade than last time I was here. We now have Falls Theatre. Wild Bill's Hotel. So yeah, the whole facade here is looking much nicer than it used to. It's more like a complete street. And then over here, we have the construction of the new roller coaster. And through here, we can see a peak at the new roller coaster. That's some nice banking on that. And then we have blasting barrels here as well, which has a few aesthetic tweaks too. So yeah, all exciting up here, but obviously that's what we're waiting for. This Intermoon lift and launch coaster coming later this season. And then we have the station and the exit from the station there. So into the queue line and it's all very surfy. So I just had my first ride on the Wave. And overall, I think that's really good. It's, it's improved, I think. I think the sit-down trains with the lap bars definitely do add a different dimension. In particular, as I predicted, the zero G roll absolutely whips you out of your seat. It's fantastic. However, there are one or two little issues that I'm gonna to come to first before I gush with too much praise because there are, I think, a couple of teething issues and a couple of things that I would like to see improved upon. So first of all, these new trains by Art Engineering are so ugly. I'm sure they could have made something a little more aesthetically pleasing. I don't know if that was a budget thing. Um, I mean, obviously they've only installed one train and not two, so it suggests that maybe they didn't want to spend crazy amounts of money on this, but even still, those are really not nice trains to look at. Secondly, while the restraints are definitely an improvement, they were really stapling, and I mean full-blown, all their weight down on the restraint so there was absolutely no gap and actually a little bit uncomfortable because the full weight of the lap bar was on my thighs for quite a while because as i'll come to the next issue they do seem to have some problems with the restraints being registered on the system so they had to do a manual check four times on on our restraints which just meant yeah you were sat there for a long time as i got into the station they'd had a shutdown for around 10 minutes at that point as well for, for another issue so it does seem to be a couple of teething problems but that's why you open on a quiet day like today to hopefully get through that phase and then on the busier days like the weekends and the summer holidays um, hopefully they can operate it a bit more efficiently but with that being said there's also a lot of things that the wave does really well um the lap bars offer so much more freedom. It's obviously not quite as damaging on your nether regions as a gentleman as well. And that zero G roll is full of whip. I think that's by far the best inversion there. The loop's okay. I would have liked to, to actually take it slightly slower so we get some hang time. And both the corkscrews at the end are nice as well. Obviously, it's a very short layout. As you, as you know, it was shockwave. But 
I think definitely a step forward. It's a much better ride. I'm going to go back for a second ride now, which I never would have done in the Shockwave days. So overall, I think a job well done from Drayton. I just hope they can iron out those few little uh, issues. So I do seem to be having some issues. It's been around uh, probably 10 minutes since the last train came out. In fact, there's only, only been one train run through since I came off. So yeah, they do seem to have some teething problems today. So as we wait for another train to come around, just take a look at some of the new signage. Now they put this massive billboard head chopper up here, obviously very reminiscent of the swarm. I have to say, I didn't really notice much of a head chopper effect on the ride itself, but it is a very cool visual. And again, good to see them investing in some theming aspects as well. And this entrance as well with the lifeguard hut, really cool. I think they've done a nice job here, very bright. Hulk Hogan colors. And by the entrance here, we also have this surfboard theming and a little mini beach here. So yeah, good to see they put some effort in with the theming. The uh, building itself looking quite sharp as well. So yeah, I think overall they've done a good job here. It would have been nice to see some painting work down the track. It is looking a little bit grimy up there, but um, I guess we can't have everything all at once. So let's hope that's something they look at in, uh, in coming times. So going back in for round two, Bit of slalom queuing as well, ski Sunday style. Well, one of the reasons they might not be dispatched is because they've got no people here. So a second ride on the wave there. Uh, at the front that time and actually a lot better ride at the front you really got pushed into those final two corkscrews and got a nice bit of hang time as you slowed down over the loop as well the zero g still absolutely insane proper whipping you to the side they are still having a lot of issues with the restraints though so it tripped while i was up there and i had to b-board us and then send the train around empty to test it before they allowed us back on again so that does account for the slow cycles. The other reason for the slow cycles is that there were just no riders. It's that quiet today that when I walked up there, there was nobody in front of me. So hence the front row ride. So yeah, I definitely recommend the front row if you can. It was a much more complete experience. Um, didn't feel like the stapling was quite so severe this time, but I was also prepared for it. So you have to take that into account too. But on the whole, I think it's it does breathe new life into Shockwave. Is this a world-class roller coaster? No, not quite, but it has some really fun elements and uh, I'd certainly recommend checking it out. So of course, one of the reasons Drayton Manor have retrofitted Shockwave with sit-down lap bar trains is to allow smaller riders to ride. So now it has a 1.2 meter minimum height requirement with an adult. So obviously much younger guests can now come and enjoy an inverting roller coaster for maybe the first time. So yeah, I think it's a good shout. Weirdly, they are also playing some sort of funky slap bass version of Hall of the Mountain King in the station, which considering their proximity to Alton Towers is an interesting needle drop. So while I'm here, it'll be a bit rude not to ride one of my favorite flat rides here in the UK, Maelstrom. Let's do it. Always fun to get back on Maelstrom. It's one of my favorite flat rides here in the UK. So forceful in space, easy. It's a real dangly hang time as well at the top. So yeah, love Maelstrom. Always love a pendulum swing. So I've just wandered down to the site of their new lift and launch coaster. It's opening later this year. We're gonna take a peek around. So onto the camcorder now and uh, taking a closer look at the lift hill. That's a tire lift. And of course it will have a launch section as well. And it looks like some sort of switch track as well, which is uh, being spotted from the aerial views. There's a nice little switch up here that looks like it could be a fun element too. It's got a hell of a bank on the drop. I don't know whether it's coming up into that or whether it'll be dropping down, but... Yeah, some fun looking elements on this family coaster. And you see a bit of disconnected track there as well. Whether that's a switch track for the uh, second train or not, I'm not sure. 
a lot of work going on around that section today. So a bit of a time jump and I'm now outside the resort around the back of the site for the new roller coaster to get some slightly different views. Got quite a funky overbank here. And from up on the hill here, you can see a lot more of the site. Now, obviously, there's a lot of scaffolding in the way with this building that's being put in place here. Not sure what this is for. That might just be a maintenance shed. There might be some additional toilet blocks or eateries. But yeah, really interesting and exciting project, this one. Are you hyped for it? Let me know down below. So great to get a look at Drayton's new coaster there. And it's always exciting to get a new Intamin open here in the UK. It does look like it's still a little way off. It looks like there's still quite a bit of work to do there. So I'm not sure we're going to see this open until the summer. But of course, if there's any updates on that, you can check out my Facebook page where I drop all the latest news as it happens. And well, seeing as I found myself in Vikings, it would be a bit silly not to have a ride on Loki, wouldn't it? This is another of my favourite flat rides. Drayton Manor really coming in clutch with the flat rides. Under your seatbelts, put your harnesses and make your way towards the end. There we go, that's the end. Well, I popped into Thomas Land to use the loos and the Troublesome Trucks is a walk-on, so why not? Well, Troublesome Trucks is a fun little family coaster. You won't believe how many times it took me to say Troublesome Trucks. That is a tongue twister. But yeah, that's a solid little family coaster. You get a couple of little moments of force. There's a little bump as you head back into the station now, which gives you a little lift out of your seat if you're sitting near the back. But um, yeah, I can see why that's popular with kids. Plus it's got cars with faces on the front, which um, gives it an advantage over the wave trains, which just have a yellow bar. Well, Thomas Land's a great little area for, for younger guests. Nice theming in there, a nice selection of rides. Obviously, I'm not necessarily the target audience for that, even though I did watch Thomas the Tank Engine as a child. That's how old it is. So just heading back into Frontier Falls. Unbelievably, in all the times I've been coming to Drayton Manor, I've never actually managed to ride the Haunting. It's either been closed, or it's just not been on my radar, or I've forgotten to ride it. Today, I'm going to make sure I get on that ride. So let's head in that direction now. Hopefully they can do a bit more with the uh, the windows and, and the fronts here because I think that could certainly look a little bit better with a bit more theming added in. But the actual facade itself is fine. It looks, uh, looks decent. I will say you can tell that Drayton Manor and Pleasurewood Hills are now owned by the same company, the Looping Group, because this is quite similar to a section at uh, Pleasurewood Hills as well. Certainly it's bringing that kind of vibe back to me anyway. It's been a while since I've been at Pleasurewood Hills, but yeah, I wonder if anyone deserves to go in jail. Yeah. It depends. I mean, if you don't like this video, you are putting yourself at risk. The scariest place under one roof. Oh, into the dark we go. Well, this is a random exit to arrive. Well, Haunting was very much a Vacoma Madhouse doing Vacoma Madhouse things, which means you sit on a bench, the room rotates around you, and you sort of move back and forward in a kind of funky illusion of a ride. Um, obviously, there's quite a few of those around. We've got three of them here in the UK alone, including Hex at Alton Towers and Monster House Party at Legoland. Um, I think this is certainly one of the better ones. The pre-shows help. The first pre-show is just a bit of a setup. The second one has a lot more effects. There's a like demon under the floors and ghosts fly around the ceiling it did feel like it dragged a little bit too long like they were having to fill a specific amount of time which is kind of what pre-shows do i guess but yeah that one definitely felt like it dragged slightly but the ride experience itself yeah same as hex really except instead of a branch you've got a coffin which opens at the end and then someone with a bag on their head pops out it was it was fine i think i think with the madhouse once you've done one you've kind of done them all unless there's a really elaborate theme to take it to a next level. Now that's a, a solid theme in there, but it's not too far removed from the one at Park Warner, for example, and even Hex is not a million miles thematically from that either. So yeah, I'd like to be interested to see 
a madhouse done completely differently. But yeah, good to get on that because that one's I've missed every time I've been here because it's been fairly low priority. So yeah, nice to get that one ticked off. Well, as you may know, Zira recently opened two family boomerang coasters at Legoland. And since I rode that, which I was really impressed with, by the way, I've actually not ridden the Vekoma boomerang to compare it against. So let's rectify that now with a bit of accelerator. When you come to ride a roller coaster, but get reminded that your MOT's due. So in the battle of Vekoma versus Zira for the best family boomerang, I think it's a bit of a tie. And for two different reasons. I actually think the Vekomas do the forward section better, and then they peter out a bit going backwards. Whereas the Zira, forward was fine but backwards felt really forceful so if they could combine to make a joint coaster that does both things you have the perfect family boomerang but yeah accelerate is fine it's pretty much the standard family boomerang layout from Vekoma not quite as exciting as something like Ekipa over at Energylandia but it's a solid coaster it's been here for quite a while now as well so it's still uh, still doing okay for his age Well, an advertised ride closed at 4.30 today and it's quarter to four now, so I think it's time to get back on a couple more rides on the wave, really cement where I think this stands within the UK coaster scene. So I just had two more rides on the wave and I think it's safe to say this is a much improved attraction. It's amazing what lap bars can do. And in particular, that inversion behind me, that zero G roll is absolutely bonkers. Like the amount of whip and ejector you get as you go through that is crazy. I now think that may be one of the best inversions we have in the UK. I'm struggling to think of any that top that. Now obviously Hyperion's got a couple which might take the cake, but for my money, that zero G roll is worth riding this coaster for alone. Now, a couple of things I'll say about position to ride in. The nearer the front you are, the better. You really get pushed up into those inversions. And this being an inversion heavy roller coaster, well to be honest, that's pretty much all it does then you want to get the best out of the inversions. However, if you are looking for a little bit of air time, towards the back, right-hand side, you really do get a bit of whip over the hill there as you uh, come down the drop. As you bank round into it, yeah, I definitely got a nice lift out of my seat and into the drop. So, yeah, I think this is a good coaster, no matter where you sit on the train, but I think front is where it's at. Now, in terms of these issues, with the trains, they've, they've had issues with the restraint locking system all day. Um, look, I'm not an expert, I'm not an engineer, I can only kind of uh, speculate based on what I've seen during the four rides I've been there, but, but what the operators are having to do is manually go around and set everybody's restraint in place around two inches, three inches away from your lap, wait for the locking mechanism to hit, and then they'll go around and force them down into your lap and staple you in. Now the stapling has got better as the day's gone on, I will say. My first ride was actually quite uncomfortable, but it has improved. I think they are starting to learn kind of what level of pressure the restraints need to be at before it triggers the sensors. But yeah, definitely an issue with throughput. On a day like today where it's not that busy, it's obviously not really affecting the queue, but on a peak summer's day, when you've got thousands of people in the park, that queue's gonna be massive unless they can resolve these issues. So hopefully they can, because they've got a decent coaster on their hand here, and it is amazing what one train can do to completely change a ride experience. And as you can see, it's going behind me now. It may not be the most attractive train, but I'll take an ugly train that rides well over a nice looking train that hurts your balls. Oh, someone dropped a lighter. Loose article policy, should we go and get it? It's maybe time to update your POS, Drayton Manor. That's still shockwave. Subscribe.